Shall we begin? Why not? Welcome to Frankie Sense and More. It's like she's got a whole lot of goodness for you with a little bit of sass. Frankie, did you just say She sure did. Not to mention, <laughs> along with... <laughs> Whoops. Join us now as Frankie Picasso and her new co-host mix it up with authors, musicians, and interviews with world-changing people. Let's begin now. Okay, let's begin now, because it only makes sense. Well, hello there, and welcome to Frankie Sense and More. I am so pleased that all of you have joined us today. You are going to meet a brilliant young biologist from Namibia. He's 25-year-old Mr. Toivo Thomas, and he's going to join us from Africa. And his innovative idea for nutrient recycling may just save the farmers and livestock in his country and others as well. Uh, also joining us is Barb Gormley. She's a director of education for Nordic Walking Company, Urban Polling, and she's also the owner of her own business, Custom Fit, a Toronto-based personal training business. And it's movie time again at the Good Radio Network, and our movie correspondent, Brent Marchand, will be joining us later in the show to chat about the best of what's out there now, as well as what's coming up those big summer blockbusters but first a frankie sense moment i just want to c- congratulate taria pitt on finishing her first iron man since being burned in a bushfire in 2011 so what does an iron man involve i bet you know barb <laughs> but basically it's swimming 3.8 kilometers then cycling 180 kilometers and finishing it all off with a 42 kilometer marathon Wow. Well, Taria Pitt is an Australian mining engineer, a motivationalist, and an author who, during the 100-kilometer Kimberley Ultramarathon, was caught in a bushfire. She was surrounded uh, all around. She couldn't get out. She suffered 65% of her body was burned. She also lost four fingers from her left hand. Her right thumb was amputated. Just absolutely a devastating, devastating end to what should have been a triumphant uh, you know, race for her. She won uh, the Premier's Award for Women of the Year in 2014. She was a finalist for Young Australian of the Year. She's an ambassador for Interplast Australia and New Zealand, and she has graced the cover of the Australian Women's Weekly. Also, her longtime boyfriend, Michael Hoskins, kudos to him, has stuck by her side and repeatedly asked her to marry him. They're now engaged and, I guess, looking for a wedding date. Uh, Today, this humanitarian, she has raised over $200,000 for Interplast. She did it by trekking a part of the Great Wall of China. So why am I mentioning her today? Definitely, she's a candidate for my other show, Mission Unstoppable. Yes, I did ask her. She's busy. But she's a great example of how we can give to causes we are passionate about in unique and creative ways. As an artist, I paint for surgery. I paint for cleft palate surgery for children, a quick 45-minute you know, surgery, and boom, their whole life is back. I also paint for VVF. It's called vesicovagular fistula. It's a devastating disease, an easy surgical fix that helps women close up wounds left behind due to narrow birth canals when their baby can't get born. They can't, it can't get out. And, of course, it's usually in an area where a cesarean isn't in her future. So these are really easy fixes. Uh, fairly inexpensive surgeries that we can raise money for and so you know as as you know that frankie sense and more is aligned with the united nations global goals initiative we're socially conscious so think about your passion and think about what you can do and how you might be able to help others in your lives well let's get on and meet toivo thomas as i said he's 25 year old biologist he grew up in an orphanage raised by american missionaries in Namibia. yet despite his humble beginnings a group of american sponsors provided quote unquote, a better than average education for him. He worked hard and in 2003 he received a scholarship to attend Winhoek International School and later pursued a bachelor in biology from Presbyterian College in Clinton, South Carolina. He met his two partners, John Lush at Winlock and later Gunter Rust on Facebook in 2015 and together they created AgriCyte. AgriCycle Namibia. I don't know why I can't pronounce that word. Uh, The company developed a proprietary nutrient recycling initiative that addresses both the environmental problems and animal protein deficiency issued faced by the agriculture sector. Now, you came to my attention through Pathfinder, a social enterprise created by the partnership of Jessica Van Thiel and Shivani Singh, who I interviewed a few months ago on Mission Unstoppable. Uh, They have developed a global, uh, an impact global development company that um, finds innovative solutions to enable local social entrepreneurs like Toivo uh, and promote academia and influence policy. So, wow. Hello. Welcome. 
Hi, Hi, hey, Frankie. How are you doing? Thank, thank you I'm for having me on great. your show. Oh, it is my pleasure. I am so excited about what you are doing. I really am. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Tell us what it is, uh, how you, you got started. Where did the idea come from? So, uh, okay, so basically, um, I was at the Presbyterian College, and uh, during my summer of uh, summer of 2013, uh, 2014, excuse me, I met um, a, a professor, uh, Dr. Gallagher, and he basically just, uh, uh, we were, I was doing an internship at this um, poultry farm, and he was like, uh, you know, we need uh, uh, a cheaper way to feed our chickens, because I was working at an orphanage there, too. And mm-hmm. then um, he, he basically just came up to me and uh, basically told me, you know, there's this thing going on around the world, this movement uh, uh, using insects as uh, possible alternative protein sources for animals. Mm-hmm. So uh, I jumped the ship and then I started doing research uh, with another friend of mine from Morocco who was also doing an internship with me. And then, uh, you know, and then as, as, as I read more about this, I was like, hmm, this, this is pretty interesting, you know. Uh, just, just the whole idea of farming insects to feed animals instead of uh, using soy and fish meal to feed them. I, I thought that was probably sustainable. And yeah, and the, the idea of um, agricycles actually came about when I came back to Namibia and I met uh, Gunter Rust on Facebook. And uh, we met over, over uh, breakfast for five minutes and uh, we clicked. And uh, we also invited John along uh, the, com- uh, the meeting and then we decided to come up with this company. So it's not just about cost, though, is it? Because, like, your country ha- in Namibia, it's, it's suffered, like, years of drought. And, and yeah. so that no, makes this, the farmers suffer and the animals suffer. So how, how does it work? Exactly. We are going through one of our worst drought periods uh, in the region right now. Um, uh, uh, we, Namibia, actually, uh, we just got our independence from South Africa uh, 20, 26 years ago. So we still heavily rely on South Africa for a lot of our, uh, our products, especially um, foodstuffs. So, okay. and, and, and then the animal feed also. So uh, since, since we do rely on South Africa and they're also going through the worst job, uh, that means that feed costs in the region and feed feed cost in Namibia is so high right now, and we have to find uh, alternative means to feed our animals. Okay. So you, how are you harvesting these insects? Okay, what so insects right are now, they? Okay, it's called the black soldier fly, Emertiolucens, that's a Latin name. Mm-hmm. And uh, they basically uh, commonly found, uh, they're native to, to North America. Okay. But uh, they also commonly found in uh, in humid uh, and also um, wet conditions uh, in areas where there's decaying matter. So if you probably walked to your chicken uh, coop or walk to your um, cow stall or um, or, or, uh, or horse stall, you most probably will come across little maggots uh, eating away at the manure. And what, right. it's, what they're basically doing is uh, they are basically digesting this um, organic waste, reducing it uh, by 75%. And, uh, and in the end, you have a nice plum um, uh, larvae, which can, which can be used for feed for animals. Okay, so the black fly is eating the manure, and then they lay uh, actually, eggs? No, no, actually, oh, the, okay. the fly has no mouth parts, actually. That's very interesting. It has no oh. mouth parts. No so the, the life cycle of the fly is about 30 days, okay? Okay, uh, yeah. So um, the, starting from the adult fly, uh, they have no moth parts. Uh, the, the male and the female mate during uh, while flying, and then the female lays an egg, her eggs. After four days, the adults die. And then okay. the eggs, excuse me? I, I, I just wonder, where did the manure come in? I lost a, a piece there, I think. Okay, so, so, so you would most probably find them at decaying matter, at okay, make, right. decaying matter size. Flying like, around like it. Farms. Exactly. So okay. uh, the, the smell of the manure or the smell of any decaying matter will attract this slice. Okay, so it's their larvae, it's the babies that are hatched in the manure, is that it, Yeah, it is? it's the babies uh, that are okay. hatched in the manure, and they churn and eat and uh, reduce the organic matter uh, and and after about two weeks, they are fully matured, and that could be used as a possible um, protein source. Okay, so the babies have a mouth. And can you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. the babies have a mouth. Yes, ma'am. The babies have a mouth, and then as they mature, they don't have a mouth anymore. So you're harvesting them as as at what stage? 
Uh, uh, what, what do you mean exactly by that? Sorry. Okay, so are you feeding the black soldier fly back to these animals, or who, what are you feeding? Okay, so we are, we are right now, we actually, um, as, as Shivani, and she, you were in the uh, last interview with Shivani, them, we in the, we're in that um, pre possibility stage in which we are doing our own research on the side. So right now we are feeding the, the larvae to uh, our own chickens. Okay. Yeah, so right now we're going through a, a test trial and also um, going through a period where we're trying to see if it, is it feasible to do this at industrial scale. Okay, so how are you harvesting the larvae, though? How how are you picking it up, and keeping them alive? Uh, or do they have we, to be alive. We have, yes, yes, ma'am. We have a net. Uh, we have an enclosed area in which everything is controlled, and uh, we basically control the the process from adult to egg, and then again, just the whole life cycle. Okay, and so they're they're. Do these flies come with any diseases? Do we have to be worried about our chickens eating this and then humans getting a disease from it? Okay, so according 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 to um, tests are done um, globally, and this is not just a Namibian thing. It's a it's sure. a global movement. There there they are a couple of companies in Europe, in South Africa, and also in Africa and the United States that are doing this. And tests have uh, have shown so far that. Um, it's, it, they are very pal uh, palatable and they're very chemical safe. Chem the chemical safety of it is uh, uh, they're, very, they're chemical safe to be used as animal feed. And uh, so far, no, no, um, there's been no connections between diseases and, uh, and, and the black soldier fly. And also the wonderful thing about the larvae is that um, once you harvest the larvae, they basically clear out their own gut. So once you feed them to the chicken, there are, there are no residues or any remainings of the feed oh. that they were eating. Yeah, so oh. it's, it's basically just clean. It's clean, clean food. Okay, we're going to go to a break. Um, we are going to come right back. I, am very, I want to talk to you a little bit more about this because I, I find it fascinating. And, Barb, if you have any questions, feel free to ask Toivo about it. It's, it's pretty unique. Um, stick around. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back, and you're going to want to hear what Toivo has to say. You want to hear what Barb has to say and what movies Brent is going to tell us are good for us to go see. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Heck no, we're just getting warmed up. Frankie Sense and more will be right back after we pay the bills. Would you like to know how to bring more ease to all the decisions you need to make in life? Knowing your core values is the first step in Joyce's free live masterclass. You'll discover your top five core values in as little as 45 minutes. Join her now at freegiftfromjoyce.com. It's the Fitness Minute with fitness expert, Annette Hammond. Do you need some new motivation to give your exercise some kick? You should consider training to run a marathon. Most people would agree, 26.2 miles is a long way to run. Yet that is what thousands of people do every year when they run a marathon. The runner's feet will slam into the hard road about 26,000 times each. Most participants do not run a marathon to win. Their reasons vary from challenging themselves, to having a goal, to just to prove that they can do it. There are 245 marathons in the United States each year. The average time for men to run a marathon is four and a half hours, and for women, it's a little over five hours. You may be thinking about running marathons, and my suggestion is, go for it. If you decide to participate in a marathon, you will train and exercise quite a bit. And I like that. I'm Annette Hammond. Hey, we're back to Frankie Sense. I am your host, Frankie Picasso. We're talking to Toivo Thomas. Barb Gormley is also here with us. And we'll be talking to her in just a moment. Toivo, you mentioned off, off air um, a moment ago that, that a very unique um, in fact, about these black soldier flies is that they that they can eat E. coli and and also salmonella, um, and they neutralize it. So it's actually not it not in the food anymore. Is yeah, well, correct? well, it's 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 not so much of eating it. What they do is they uh, re, uh, release uh, as they churn, they release enzymes. Okay. Basically, then 
that that neutralizes or that block the pathway for this uh, bacteria to multiply. So, so um, let me ask you something then. In farming, um, one of, in recent years, we've we've seen E. coli come in through lettuce, through some vegetables that you know manure has run off, I guess, into some fields, and and so the E. coli virus has gotten into some vegetables, and then in, mm -hmm. in turn, those vegetables have been sent, you know, from Mexico to Canada to, to wherever. So if if you had an abundance of the black soldier fly larvae, would that in in effect kill that and kind of make sure that we that didn't happen well it's not so much kill it but so much uh neutralize just it. i mean just neutralize it or right. or decrease the 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 concentration of it studies have shown that they do decrease the concentration of these uh known pathogens uh, but if farmers pathogen were like basis. encouraging them to be there would would it help eliminate that problem yeah 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 they uh, yeah okay. they 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 help a lot actually what and then very interesting about the black soldier fly is also is that it helps uh, to reduce pests uh, like flies. So you have well, this fly come around that will go to somewhere else and then will come and feed on your waste and blah, blah, blah. But so what they basically, uh, what the black soldier fly does is it basically secretes uh, uh, these uh, enzymes and pheromones that basically discourages um, these flies to come and lay their eggs and thus also increase the the, uh, the the concentration or the presence of this E. coli. Okay. So how so are the farmers the, feeling about all this in your country? Well, well we've approached some of them, and some of them have, uh, uh, like, the, the idea of, of insect farming is very new to Namibia. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and actually, my tribe, the Abambo tribe, we are known for eating a multiple uh, insect species. Uh, we are we, so so. It's nothing new to us. But the idea right. of uh, farming them in an industrial scale is something very new. And uh, we've we've talked to a couple of um, a ministerial lines here, and uh, they they are keen into uh, going into research with us on this and uh, looking at using it possibly as uh, as feed for fish and, and and for chickens. And and so, what are the farmers in your country feeding chickens right now? Okay, so right now what we, what what's happening is we are feeding them basically soy uh -huh. uh, and maize. Okay, so corn, soy and corn. Exactly, and 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 uh, of course of the of the drought that we're having right now, it, it's mm -hmm. it's not feasible at all, you know. Uh, uh, right. And and also Namibia's uh, socioeconomic uh, standing is not the best in the world. And so I mean, with the poverty that we already have in the country, it doesn't make sense to deprive people of food that can be given to human beings and just feed them uh, and, and, and feed them and that to insects, I mean to animals. So do, do, the, do the animals thrive on the insects though? Like do they, is there enough fat on them, you know? Like yeah, uh, so the black soldier fly, con uh, depending on, on what you, you, you feed them, mm -hmm. they have different percentages. So we're talking about a protein percentages of, of about 30 to about 50. And a lipid concentration about 15 percent. Lipids being fats. Uh -huh. So they are very rich in fats uh, and also very good uh, uh, nutri um, amino acids. Okay. So yeah. you're, right now you're looking to raise money, and um, Pathfinders is helping you to do that. Correct. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. You're looking to raise money to continue your research. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Um, and and, and uh, the wonderful thing about this is that we, we just got, I mean, we started last year, you know, so it's, this is the brainchild of the three of us, of John and I, uh, John, Gunter and I. And uh, uh, so during the process, we, we have had, uh, of course, we, we confronted uh, different, um, different groups and also uh, applied for different awards. And uh, last year, we were the finalists in the uh, African Entrepreneurship Award, which is a Pan-African uh, competition. Sure. Um, we, we didn't win anything, but you know that that was a, a good exposure that gave us a good platform, basically to to get our idea across uh, Africa. And then uh, last month, we were just voted uh, the the startup of the year by Total, the French company. Wow! Oh, wonderful! So yeah, yeah. So but well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you, thank you. We're still in the process of, of raising more money uh, to to start our, our our pilot phase of the project, and then hopefully going into the uh, into the full scale production. 
Nice. Well, your, your company certainly, Agriculture um, or AgriCycle Namibia, certainly touches on many of the United Nations global goals for the future. And so I'm really excited um, that there's young people like you who are innovative and looking out for our future. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for this opportunity. Eh? Oh, it really is my pleasure. Stick around. We're going to meet Barb Gormley. Barb has been the Director of Education for Nordic Walking Company Urban Polling for the last nine years. In, in her role, she travels the country presenting at conferences and educational events, introducing the general public to the health and fitness uh, and health and fitness professionals, uh, the many benefits of Nordic walking polls. Um, she also owns, as I mentioned earlier, her own uh, company called Custom Fit. It's a Toronto based personal training business and she loves to help people reach their fitness health and weight loss goals and have fun along the way and i think you'll find that out she's also a health and fitness writer she writes for publications such as chatelaine the toronto star and fitness business canada welcome barb hey thanks frankie good to be here oh i'm so excited to have you here i think it's uh it, it's so interesting, the, the, this Nordic walking. It seems like it's exploding, is it? Or is it just it really, because I have an interest in it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It really, truly is exploding. It's been exploding for a little while now. But, uh, you know, when I started doing this nine years ago, I would be out with my poles, either on my own or with other people, and I would get these kind of quizzical looks. And people would say, what exactly are you doing? Sometimes they would verbalize it. Sometimes that would just be the look on their face. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I just say, you know, Nordic walking or, you know, sometimes it's called urban polling. And uh, But now I find now people know what it is. They may not quite understand what it's all about, but I know that they go, oh, Nordic walking now. You know, when I when I when when people approach me or I, I say that, oh, I love Nordic walking, I teach Nordic walking. So so uh, we've come a long way. <laughs> wow. Well, um, you, you, you wrote to me and told me that they have 5,000 certified instructors in every province and territory across Canada. That's phenomenal. Isn't it phenomenal? Well, it's very interesting because the woman who started the company uh, is an occupational therapist from Vancouver, and uh, she just saw there was a great market for it. She thought, um, you know, as an occupational therapist, it could be a nice mm -hmm. kind of therapy for tool for people who needed a little extra help with uh, stability and balance because that was her mm -hmm. business. But she was also a real fitnessy person, and she thought, wow, this is also a great fitness tool. She knew it was huge in Europe. You know, millions of people uh, Nordic walk in Europe on a regular basis. And um, but she had no idea that she was going to have to get into the education end of things. And, you know, that's my big role within the company. Right. She thought she'd just distribute the polls and, uh, you know, that would kind of be it. But, um, you know, in Europe, I think everybody does it and people just kind of pick up and you teach your friends or your kids kind of the same way, you know, you can play hockey here without right. ever having to take, you know, lessons and your family sure. kind of teaches you to skate and you just kind of soak it all in. So uh, I think that must be what happens in Europe. I think they kind of smiled that we have so much happening here, you know, lessons and clinics and all this kind of stuff. But it, it only makes sense because it's so new. Um, but Great. anyway, so we have this big educational arm where we teach people how to do it properly because it's really the only way to get the full benefits from it. Well, you studied ballet for many years and you said that you love to run. So how does Nordic walking fit into that as far as your fitness goals? Like, do you feel that this is the one? Is it enough for you? Do you do other oh. stuff too or? Yeah, well, I do a whole lot of different things. But the beauty about urban polling is you can get a really um, thorough, full-body workout. You know, the research shows that just about every single muscle in the body is used as mm -hmm. soon as you start adding poles to walking. So it's just a really thorough, everything's kind of working uh, workout. Um, and but, but one thing that's missing is that kind of banging, high-impact force that we get with a lot of activities, such as running, um, uh, even, you the know, high. Like <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Tennis, you know, a lot of fitness classes have a lot of jumping and leaping. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, some of that's great. Um, but sometimes it's nicer to have that impact taken out a little easier on the hips and knees. So, um, so it's, you know, sometimes people use it as their entire workout regime is urban polling or Nordic walking. We use those two words pretty much interchangeably. Sure. Uh, and then some people, um, you know, mix it up and they do some urban polling. Um, they still continue to run they do fitness classes but um it's really it, just it, it, i'm sorry it, I, I read that that it really um improves like it engages your core and it and it strengthens your core mm -hmm, which is something a lot sure. of people do right 
It does for sure. You know, when you just kind of walk without poles, just normal walking, your arms are really just dangling by your side or swinging by your side. Mm -hmm. And your core, in fact, your abs and kind of everything around your midriff uh, can really be quite soggy, you know, <laughs> we're just kind yeah. of <laughs> just kind of doing nothing. Uh, but as soon as you add poles, everything kind of tightens up. You, you sort of have to have the poles in your hands to understand this, but I can give you a little quick demo that everybody who's listening can do. So if you're, if you have a table or a desk in front of you or even a kitchen counter, if you take one arm and you stretch it out in front, like you're going to shake hands and you put your, your arm and your hand over top the table, and then you take that outside edge of your hand, you know, if you're going to do a karate chop or something, yeah. if you Press down on that outside edge of your hand. Keep your arm nice and long if you can in that handshake position. If you push down there, you should feel your abdominals tighten yeah. up. If yeah. you give yourself a poke with the other hand, you'll see. And the back of your arm, that arm, that long arm that's pressing that down. Yeah, the muscles, if you feel the back, your triceps on the back of your arm. Yeah. If you feel the back of your shoulder, you know, your lats that run down the side of your body. Everything tightens up when you do that pressing down action. And that's what we do with the poles. You can't really see that when somebody goes by with them. But the base of the handle has a, a thick ledge on it. And we press down on that ledge. We drive our hands down to the side of our thighs. And that propels the body forward kind of between the poles. Wow. We're going to go break very soon. But um, I mean, Toivo, have you ever seen these poles? Do they do that in Africa? Um, no, ma'am. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> I just thought I'd ask, no. though. You never know. I mean, I've only seen snow, like, when I was 20-something years old, 20, 24. So yeah, but this is not I'm done not, in I'm... snow. It's in dry land. This is, on, like, now in the summer and stuff. You can really do oh, it in really? all seasons. Sometimes we call it, um, you know, cross-country skiing without the skis. Okay. So... You know, so you're really moving along, gliding quite gracefully along, but no skis. <laughs> and you have boot tips, usually on the bottom of the of the poles uh, that connect to the ground, give you a nice contact and traction, and then you push off with them. Cool. Oh, okay, I should try. Yeah, it sounds like a, a, it's a great for, it sounds like a great form of exercise. And I'm going to find out if it is or not. But we're going to go to a break, and when we come back, I'm going to talk to Barb a little bit more um, <laughs> about these poles. I want to know why some look a little bit different. I want to know, you know, is this good for everybody and everywhere? So when we get back, we're going to talk a little bit more to Barb. Don't go anywhere. We are coming right back, and Toivo's still here with us too. Warmed up, Frankie Sense and more. We'll be right back after we pay the bills. Would you like to know how to bring more ease to all the decisions you need to make in life? Knowing your core values is the first step in Joyce's free live masterclass. You'll discover your top five core values in as little as 45 minutes. Join her now at freegiftfromjoyce.com. It's the Fitness Minute with fitness expert, Annette Hammond. Have you ever felt that you're too busy to exercise? That is a common excuse and one that is used quite often. But the reality is we make time for what is important to us. We all get 24 hours in a day, and it's simply a matter of prioritizing and managing your time. If you have time to watch your favorite television program, get a manicure, or read a book, you have time to exercise. I always encourage my clients to exercise first thing in the morning, if possible. Roll out of bed 30 minutes earlier, put on your exercise clothes, and head outside for a brisk walk or run, or head to the gym. Get it done early before the demands of the day interfere with your exercise schedule. Starting your day off with exercise is energizing, invigorating, and mood enhancing. For the Fitness Minute, I'm Annette Hammond. And we're back. You're listening to Frankie Sense and More. Right now we're talking to Barb Gormley about urban polling or Nordic walking. The two terms can be combined. And tell us about the poles, Barb. I know that, you know, people come in all shapes and, and sizes. So are pole, all poles equal? Well, there's a lot of different poles out there. Um, and, you know, a lot of people come to my classes and they'll bring, you know, a trekking or a hiking pole, mm -hmm. thinking that they can use those poles for Nordic walking. But unfortunately, you can't. It's a little bit... Um 
you know, it's a little bit like, you know, downhill skiing and cross country skiing. If you know, if you're familiar with those, you know that you can't interchange those poles either. You kind of like to think that poles are poles, but but they're not. So uh, the quickest way, if you happen to have some poles right now and you're wondering if you can use them for Nordic walking, the quickest way to tell if they're a Nordic walking pole is to look at the very bottom of them and look down to uh, to see what's on the bottom. And they're a Nordic walking pole if they have a, a rubber-shaped boot tip on the bottom, a boot-shaped tip rather boot shaped tip. Uh, right. yeah it kind of looks like a running shoe on the bottom and it's angled on the bottom so that's a good sign that that will be a nordic walking pole suitable for nordic walking if it's got a round tip on the bottom then that's a hiking or a trekking pole and uh, with hiking and trekking you know there's no rules you just kind of put the pole out in front of you you lean on it it helps you get over a, a puddle or walking along a log you can lean into it uh you know obviously you don't need any kind of instruction to use a one hiking pole some people use two hiking poles um but you know as i said previously you do for nordic walking um a little bit different the poles are a little different we're quite particular about how long the poles are as well um Mm -hmm. most of the poles people use these days are telescoping poles meaning that you can make them longer or short shorter uh and that's so you can kind of share them with friends it's really handy for me as an instructor i have lots of poles i make them shorter or longer depending on who i'm loaning them to and also it makes them easy to put them in your trunk or put them in a backpack and, and carry them around. Oh, well, that, that's kind of interesting, actually, because I know that um, I had talked to you about the activator pole, which is a pole that, that is used for people who um, need physical therapy or don't have balance, maybe older folks who need a little bit extra help. And you, you mentioned that you walk a little bit differently with that pole, but the boot, um, do you change the boot on the pole depending upon the surface that you're walking on? You do, yeah. So if you're going to be walking, um, say you're in a beautiful park or one of the lovely ravines we have here in Toronto, and it's nice soil, and it's kind of nice, a nice soft surface, then you just pop the boot tips off and stick them in your pocket. And what you have is a carbide tip, kind of a, looks like a ski pole tip, kind mm-hmm. of. And, uh, and that will dig into the soil nicely and give you lots of traction. And then if you come to a sidewalk or you decide to walk on, a, on an asphalt road, then you pop the boot tips on again, and that just gives you a nice soft bouncy landing uh, instead of that horrible sound of you know steel on a sidewalk <laughs> sure you just got the nice rubber boot tip it gives you a little bit of bounce yeah and and so let's say that you were um, a nordic walker and you had a knee surgery and you wanted to get to walking and you wanted to use the other pole can you get the just the boot to switch on the pole or do you have to have to get another pole yeah, a lot of people come to my classes who are post rehab. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, they've had some kind of knee surgery or knee replacement, uh, and they really love coming to the classes because they're just a little hesitant about walking still. They don't have complete confidence. And so using the poles gives them four on the floor confidence. And at the same time, as a bonus, they're getting core strengthening and upper body strengthening and all that. So there's, there's so much you kind of get as a package. <laughs> you also improve your posture, et cetera, et cetera. If you have really kind of quite dramatic balance and stability issues then you want to switch to the pole that you were referring to it's called the activator pole made by urban polling and it has a bell-shaped tip and those poles are used more like a a cane or you know walking with two canes and Mm. you definitely need um, you know a little assistance from your physiotherapist or somebody like me just to you know make sure you're using those properly Uh, so we don't really call that nordic walking at all but it's kind of in the same family it's definitely in the same family Okay. Now, some poles um, I've seen have have um, uh, straps, and some don't. Yours don't. Right. What, yeah, um, you know, I've walked with poles with straps and the poles that are strapless and you can get a great workout from um, from either style. Uh, my preference is just the ones without the straps because I find them so easy to use. The Urban Poling um, brand poles have this very thick handle that your handles, hands rather very easily wrap around. They're ergonomic. There's a right and a left. And, you know, if you need to stop to uh, have a drink of water to get something out of your pocket, uh, you don't have to kind of get in and out. Out of your straps, you know, release the Velcro, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they're just kind of like a, a grab and go kind of pole. So I find them very helpful. As an instructor, I'm constantly kind of, you know, um, uh, I need my hands to kind of help yes. people and give them a little push here, a little lift there. Sometimes I'll say, let's, let's change poles. I think my poles are at a better height for you. Let's just very quickly here change poles and see if my poles are a little better. So I just find them very, very um, uh, practical, practical. 
and people really love the feel of the handles. And I find some people are uncomfortable um, getting themselves kind of hooked into straps as well. They, they, they feel better having their hands just a little more free. Do people like to, to um, in your opinion, do they like to go in a group as, as polars or do they... Are the adventure independent in- adventurers? You know what? I get all kinds of people yeah. who I'm teaching, but I do find people love the social aspect. I find just the nicest people come out to my classes, oh, and uh, right. usually, you know, social people. Very often, people are coming on their own, so everybody's kind of interested in making friends. I try to try to get everybody knows each other's names, and you know, we go on little adventures. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, we go off, as I was saying, into the ravines and trails. I like to take my classes. We'll often start in the same location, but we go in different directions each time. So it's a, it's a little different every time. There are, however, people who are just kind of more solo people. And so mm-hmm. I find they will come and maybe have one private lesson with me or just come for one or two classes. And then they're absolutely fine and off they go on their own. And sometimes they'll check in with me, um, you know, just to make sure that they've, uh, you know, their technique is still looking fabulous. Uh, so it's a bit of a personal thing. You know, some people sure. love to run in a group. They love chatting and it makes the time go by. Right. Other people yeah. really kind of like to be on their own and they have things to kind of think about or they just like the quietness. It's their meditative the time. It's the yeah. serenity. That's the word exactly. Yeah. Um, what kind of successes have you, have you had as, a, as an instructor? You know, it's so rewarding being in the fitness business because, um, as fitness professionals, we hear all the time and we see it in front of us, people getting in shape, people just feeling better about themselves, people losing weight, people learning new skills. Uh, it, it's really, really wonderful. But I, I must say I've taught um, and coached running, power walking. I've taught lots of sports. I've taught all, all those fancy fitness classes that are out there. And I do find that the people who come to my um, Nordic walking classes uh, are just so excited and see such wonderful results. So, you know, so there's one person I'm thinking of who is a triathlete and, um, you know, that could be a little bit punishing on your body. And so she, um, had a neck problem. She also had uh, a hip problem and that's a pretty thrilling activity, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, triathlons. Um, and so I'm not saying that urban polling is equivalent to that, but she's just found that that's her go-to thing. And she loves it. She oh, just nice. absolutely loves it. And because of her neck, her head just sits very comfortably on top of her shoulders, no problems. Uh-huh. Um, you know, she's offloading weight into her poles from, right. um, you know, from her joints. And so she's very happy. So, you know, she's one of those people who's just really managed to maintain her fitness level and, um, uh, and just, um, yeah, maintain her fitness level, really, having had to make a really big change from one um, one activity to another. You know, there's another woman, just very quickly, she had two very close pregnancies, close to each other, oh. and um, they were very high-risk pregnancies, and she found herself bedridden afterwards. She mm-hmm. gained 100 pounds, yeah. you know, yeah, very dramatic me. story. <laughs> and she says, thank goodness for my urban poles, because she said that when she finally got the go-ahead to start act- getting active again, she could really only walk to the end of her driveway and back. Oh, and this wow. is a woman in her 30s who was previously fit. Um, and she said, thank goodness. She said, I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have the poles. And then she walked a little further, a little further, a little further. Um, and eventually she lost, she shed the 100 pounds, also with healthy eating, of course. But she yeah. um, is so thankful. And now she's, you know, highly involved in urban polling. And then just oh, one wow. last guy who told me he was so happy. This is a fellow in his 70s. And to be honest, I'd never seen anyone walk quite so slowly with poles before. <laughs> and he had a lot of health problems, and it was it was very very difficult to walk alongside him that slowly. That wow. he picked up his pace, he got faster, and his doctor took him off his blood pressure medication, hey. and he lost eleven pounds at the same time. And so he's one of those people who, you know, told me, you know, these polls have changed my life, Barb. And I, I do hear that somewhat regularly. That phrase, thank goodness, these polls. Well, have I'm changed looking forward my life. to them to change my life, Barb. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Barb's going to be my trainer on Sunday. Woo, I'm going to take the certification. So I'm very excited because I had a lot of health issues and, and I'm hoping that these polls are going to be my magic bullet. And <laughs> so that's pretty exciting stuff. Now, you told me an interesting fact that you took a year off and you sailed on a boat with your partner to the Caribbean. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was quite the year. It's kind of a a dream of a year, you know, to go from, uh, you know, big city Toronto to all the 
a sudden sailing, um, you know, to the British Virgin Islands and all the way down to Trinidad, stopping at, you know, all the islands in between, just living in a sarong and a bathing suit um, for an entire year. So I was very, very lucky. And um, it was uh, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Quite, yeah I, had a, I had a guy on last year. week who also did did that. He, he and his partner bought a sailboat, and they lived on it for three years and sailed around the world. Toivo, wow. have you been on a sailboat? Are you still with us, Toivo? No. no yeah, did, have you been. ever been on a sailboat? No? No, ma'am, no. Look, no? Looking forward to a fun day, though. Oh, good. Yeah, sounds sounds very exciting. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Did you so? How you, you did you? Um, how like did you have to fill up your larder, or did you you know pull in and fish and just how did you eat, Barb? How how did that? Oh go for you? well, we tried to eat locally as much as possible, so we certainly had a lot of canned goods because you know you're at the whim of the weather and you never know sure. exactly where you you know you have a plan for the day, but you always want to make sure you've got lots of provisions with you. So we tried to eat locally as much as possible. So yeah, lots of fish, uh, lots of wonderful fresh fruits and vegetables, and we'd go to all the markets and um, met wonderful wonderful people um and uh it was a pretty amazing year wow that's awesome well that that you know urban polling if you haven't heard of it or or um nordic walking check it out check barb out if you are in the toronto area check her out and custom fit and see if maybe she can help you out with your health goals that'd be nice and with us now brent marchand you are with us hello Hey, Frankie. How are you? I'm doing well. Brent is the Good Radio Network movie correspondent, and he is joining us with one minute to go to break. But I wanted to say hi to you uh, before we go to break. Tell us what movies we're going to talk about today. Well, we got a couple of new releases. Uh, One is a wonderful romantic musical comedy called Sing Street. Uh, One is a sci-fi adventure called Midnight Special. And another one is an interesting drama called Demolition. Wow. Okay. Looking forward to talking about those. Uh, Midnight Special. Wasn't there a movie? Is that a remake? Uh, no, actually, that was a concert series back in, back in the 70s. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also a gun, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I believe so, yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're going to come back with Brent in just a few minutes. Um, not even minutes, but we are going to break right now, so stay tuned. Stick around. We'll be right back. Heck no, we're just getting warmed up. Frankie Sense and more will be right back after we pay the bills. Secret Cuisines and Sacred Rituals is a quest, a place, and a feast. Join host Vilasi Venkatachalam every week to explore myths, mystique, old medicine, and brilliant modern solutions through a dazzling kaleidoscope of cuisines, cultures, and cures. This is the place where tribes gather, strangers and familiars, to be memory keepers and makers of our evolving, enduring, evergreen, spoken legacy of wisdom and ingenuity. In Velazzi's words, when we do old things in new ways and new things in old ways, we paint with an inspired palette, weave our own healing traditions, and become our own guru. Velazzi is a troubadour of secret cuisines and sacred rituals. She collects stories of wisdom, in ingenuity and grit she believes wellness and transformation happen when you stand at the threshold of delight and discovery she displays her hidden penchant for drama when she leads the safari at the supper club her favorite pastime is to extol the marvels of cuisines cultures and cures to her audience in workplaces seminars and salons her mantra is be your own guru she is a biochemist botanist and alchemist who likes to churn delightful useful things from a brew of art and science Science, ancient and evolving, old medicine and new cures. Join Velocity every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, only here on the Woohoo Radio Network. Frankie Sense and more. It's like she's got a whole lot of goodness for you with a little bit of sass. Frankie, did you just say she sure did? And not to mention, <laughs> along with, <laughs> whoops. Every week, Frankie and a new co-host mix it up with authors, musicians, and interviews with world-changing individuals. Frankie Sense and more. It only makes sense to tune in. (laughs) 
Hey, the gang's all here. We're in Africa. We're in Toronto. We're in Chicago. <laughs> and Brent is with us, and he is our movie correspondent from the Good Radio Network. Hello, and welcome back. And we well, thank you so much. Discussing, you said Sing Street. Sing Street. What a fun movie. Uh, the yeah. story of an, uh, It's set in the 1980s. It's the story of an Irish teenager whose family is having some troubles and uh, the economy is going, going, you know, in the doldrums in, in Dublin at the time. Um, and he ends up getting transferred to a new school that he doesn't like. But one of the shining stars of his new uh, school is he meets this young woman who he's really quite taken with. And he's told that she generally is rather aloof, doesn't talk to people. So he approaches her and says, um, would you be interested in being um, a model in a music video that I'm making with my band? And she says, okay, sure, why not? I want to be a model anyways. Well, there's just one hitch. He doesn't have a band. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the story of him putting the band together and um, using that as a means to win over the hearts of uh, the heart of his, uh, his beloved. Um, but an interesting thing happens along the way in the fact that um, – he discovers he's really got quite a knack for music that he oh, really okay. hadn't developed previously. So this romantic spark is sort of a, a, a catalyst to launch him into an even bigger endeavor that helps him to become the person he's meant to be. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. It, you know, it reminds me, in a way, it kind of reminds me of the commitments, you know, another Irish film yes. with, you know, coming of age, really, you know. Yeah, and, but, and, uh, and the other thing, too, is that it's, it's a really, it's a very good spoof of the early days of music videos. Okay. Um, many of which were kind of on the silly side, and yeah. this doesn't hesitate to poke fun at them, but it does it in a way where it doesn't go over the top. So, um, and it's got a great soundtrack, uh, a lot of original songs plus music from uh, bands like Joe Jackson, The Cure, um, Hall & Oates. Um, okay, so a know, really, really 80s feel. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, Real awesome. good, good feel-good movie. Nice. Then in uh, the science fiction vein, uh, there's a movie out right now called Midnight Special, which is the story of a, a young man who has a number of very unusual powers, uh, but he doesn't quite know how to control them. And at the same time, there's a number of people from different factions who are trying to control him. Mm. Uh, one is a, a religious cult, and another uh, organization that's after him is uh, the uh, National Security Agency. Because they think, well, maybe he can be weaponized or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So oh, he's, wow. on the, he's on the run with his father. And uh, his father, at the same time, is trying to understand who his son is because he's got all these unusual abilities that just seem to kind of pop up out of nowhere. Well, over the course of the film, basically, it's a story of, of the kid learning to um, what it means to be himself. Oh. And he's a very different person. And it's something I think that anybody who doesn't necessarily fit the mold of what society expects of them mm -hmm. um, can relate to. Um, it's a science fiction movie. It's a road trip movie. Um, it's a kind of a coming of awareness movie, uh, all sort of rolled into one. Really, very well done. Okay, looking forward to it. And again, then the third? if we can find it in our area. <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, it may be coming to the conclusion of its run pretty soon. So finding it may still be a little bit on the difficult side, but mm -hmm. it's it's worth it. And it'll be out on DVD soon for sure. So if you don't okay. catch it in the theater, go see it then. Okay. Uh, and the third movie uh, is a movie called Demolition, which uh, stars Jake Gyllenhaal in yet another wonderful performance. He's really a terrific yeah, actor. I'm looking forward to that movie. Yeah. Um, he plays a, a, an investment banker whose wife is uh, tragically killed in a car accident. And what happens in the aftermath of that is he's trying to figure out how to grieve because he's finding that he's not able to bring himself to release the feelings that most people think would happen in a situation like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's in a process of um, learning to rebuild his life. But it's interesting in the fact that it's not so much having to rebuild over the sense of the loss of his spouse. It's more about him learning to have to rebuild himself from the ground up, mm -hmm. which is something that he didn't always really pay attention to in the days when he was still married. 
so it's a it really it's a it's a journey of self discovery in many ways brought about by a very interesting catalyst uh the passage of his wife um uh showing how a life changing event really can be a life changing event but in ways that nobody predicts going in you know, it's interesting um, about feelings because I, I had a client once as a coach who, and I said, where do you feel that? And Barb, you probably know about this stuff too. Where, and I go, where did you feel that? And he's like, I'll get back to you. And he called me back in two hours. He goes, I don't have feelings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so somebody who's kind of dead to their emotion, dead to, you know, where they feel things and, and can't feel things. And, and it sounds like Jake was like that in this movie. He, he suffered because he didn't feel. Yeah. Well, there's actually he one he was thing. supposed to feel. <laughs> there's actually one scene where he goes to see his doctor and the doctor says where exactly are you feeling numb and he uses his hands and gestures to his whole body and he says well just kind of here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. there you go yeah but he's terrific he's he's really wonderful um the uh woman who is his co-star in the movie who kind of helps to bring him out of this is played by naomi watts who, who again gives another great performance yeah so um and he's also dealing with a rather curmudgeonly uh, father-in-law of his late wife, played by Chris Cooper, who is also okay. an, a wonderful performance. So this is a really good movie. Do you guys, um, Toivo, do you like movies? Do you watch movies? Uh, yes, ma'am. What was your favorite movie? On the spot you... right now. Uh, huh. <laughs> Think about that one. I'll probably okay. Probably Monte Cristo. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Barb, what about you? Oh, dear. Uh, give me a moment to think about it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. No worries. I know um, it's hard because I see so many movies. I love so many movies. Just yes. abs- absolutely love them. Love them all so much. But uh... <laughs> Well, that's the other thing we're coming into right now, too. We're coming into summer blockbuster season, yeah. and you're going to have a lot of options for movies. Yeah. Um, there's... Um, a number of um, movie franchises that have been having a number of releases over the years that are putting out new installments this summer. And uh, I think they're going to end up having some really interesting and meaningful stories. In particular, um, the, there's a new Star Trek movie coming out in July. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a new Alice in Wonderland movie coming out around Memorial Day. Right. Uh, and there's also a new installment in the X-Men series uh, coming oh. out around Memorial Day. Wow. And um, all three of those are, are franchises that um, definitely go beyond just explosions and, you know, big budget special effects to provide meaningful stories in connection with their, uh, with their, uh, all their action sequences. So right. I'm looking forward to all three of those. It's interesting, though, how they're all kind of sci-fi based. So like nothing, nothing's not sci-fi, but, you know, not of this world. Well, this, this is yeah, that's kind of typical of the summer. Summer is often called the popcorn season. You know, uh-huh. it's, it's it's meant to be kind of light of and uh, fluffy viewing. But right. interestingly enough, in recent years, a number of um, studios have been quietly sneaking in films that are a little more substantial. They don't maybe get quite as much press. Uh-huh. They usually play at the independent uh, art house places. Right, right. Um, but they end up being wonderful little gems of movies. Um, so I'm sure there'll be plenty of those as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey, hey Frankie, speaking of wonderful little gems, I just thought of my favorite movie. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you know of it, but it's called Exit Through the Gift Shop. It's the movie about Banksy, the artist, you know, the underground artist Banksy. Oh, yes. 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 Do you, yeah, I anyway. I love that movie, but wow. I love, love that, that movie. It's Exit just... Through the Gift Shop. Exit through the gift shop. Yeah, okay. I really recommend you check that out. It's very funny. It's very educational too. I didn't really know much about Banksy, uh, and uh, it's a very fun and interesting movie. Definitely, we'll check. There have been out. a lot of really interesting documentaries that have been coming out in recent years, and uh, several of them that I wrote about on the um, on the Good Radio Network page uh, are worth checking out. One is um, um, Peggy Guggenheim, Art Addict. Mm-hmm. Uh, and another one is uh, Hitchcock Truffaut, uh, both really terrific movies that explore the mm-hmm. works of these people um, in depth, lots of great footage, lots of great uh, interviews with them. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a genre of movies that 
for a long time was pretty much ignored except for maybe a passing mention at the Oscars each year. But now they're, they've found that there really is quite a market for this, and um, people are going to see them, and that's a good thing because it's increasing the number that are getting out there, and it's also increasing the quality of the films that are coming out. Yeah, I, you know what? They're just amazing. And I, I just watched a really fun little movie, Lady in the Van, starring Maggie Smith. Oh, yes. The other, mm-hmm. Oh, what a, what a wonderful little gem that one was. She's so brilliant. She's, just She's so terrific. Brilliant. She's, She's terrific. She's terrific. Unbelievable. Uh, before we go, I just want to make sure that everybody um, gets their information out. We've only got about another two and a half minutes. So, Toivo, tell us how we can reach you if people want to uh, find out more about, about what you're doing. Okay, yeah, so we're currently still working on our website, but uh, right now we can be reached at uh, agricyclenamibia at gmail.com. Perfect. And Barb, your website? Uh, probably the easy, well, my website's just my name, barbgormley.com. Or if you just uh, Google Nordic Walking Toronto, I'll pop right up there too. Perfect. And of course, you can find Brent on the Good Radio Network and also on his own site. He is the author of two wonderful books and a third on the way, I believe. Yes, correct? I am. <laughs> That's correct. And uh, there's also um, pages on Facebook uh, dedicated to each book. Um, get the picture, Conscious Creation Goes to the Movies, and Consciously Created Cinema, The Movie Lover's Guide to the Law of Attraction. Nice. Now, my husband's favorite movie is Dances with the Wolves, and I don't know how many times we've watched it. <laughs> I mean, it seems to be on every week now. I don't know why, but um, it was a brilliant little movie, though. It was just wonderful. I remember the first time I watched it, just in awe, in awe. But, uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody for coming on the show today. It was just so lovely to um, be able to speak to you, Toivo. I'm so impressed. You're so young and with so much innovation and in, in, uh, in front of you and, you know, this business that you've created with your partners, AgriCycle, Namibia. Best of luck. Best of luck, um, you know, with the trials and with the future of the business and with your investors. And I know that that um, Jessica and Shivani will be sure to help you become a success. And Barb, look forward to seeing you on Sunday. And if you folks haven't heard of urban polling or Nordic walking, make sure you look it up because it's um, something that I think everybody can do, really. And we'll see you at the movies because I'm definitely going to be there this weekend. Take care. <laughs> Take care, Brent. Thank you so much for being on, and I'll talk to you uh, next month. Have a good weekend. Yep, you too. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Thanks, Frankie. Thank you. Turn the world